So during the summer, we often think about all the irrigation going on in the state of Nebraska and, and elsewhere in the High Plains region. Uh, and a key part to uh, irrigation is to know the quality of the water you're using. So today we're gonna talk about uh, irrigation water quality testing here at War Laboratories and what all goes into that report and how does that you know, ultimately end up helping you, the, the farmer. Uh, so uh, when we do sample irrigation water, we'll start with the sampling side. What we wanna do is be making sure that the well has been running uh, for probably you know six to eight hours, and we want that cone of depression to start forming so we know we're pulling fresh water out of the aquifer at the time of sampling. And so we just need to stick a bottle simply underneath uh, either a nozzle or an open gate, go ahead and collect that sample. And now that we've got the sample collected, well, we want to get that back to the lab within a timely manner uh, in a day or two, and, and we don't want it to be sitting out in the warm sun. So uh, now the first thing to do, and the most prevalent thing in the state of Nebraska is the nitrate aspect of uh, the irrigation water. This nitrate is fully plant available, and we should be able to use this right away as a nitrogen credit for our current, cropping, uh, current crop year. So that's the, the most important thing uh, that, that will come on the irrigation water quality test from a fertilizer perspective and kind of a environmental stewardship pers perspective. Uh, but the irrigation water quality is much more than that, of course. Uh, and starting at the top of the report, uh, we cover pH and the conductivity, the cation and anion balance. So here we're making sure that our pH is appropriate. Uh, most irrigation waters have pHs 7, 2, and above. Uh, high pH is not a problem. We know that we have hard water in Nebraska and in many places, so that shouldn't come to a surprise for us. But uh, the next thing is we look at that EC. If we have an elevated soluble salts level, uh, then we would need to take a pause in, in making sure we don't apply in especially hot, dry uh, conditions because we could damage plant tissue. This is usually only a problem in arid areas of the Southwest, uh, the Southwest United States, not necessarily not Nebraska. Uh, the next is the cation and ion balance. So here what we're doing is we're taking cations plus charges anions minus charges, uh, those numbers should be as close to equal to one another as possible. And this is just kind of a quality control aspect on your sample. So uh, that just is kind of showing you that we've identified everything that's in the water. Uh, next, we move down to SAR and adjusted SAR. Uh, these have to deal with the amount of sodium versus calcium and magnesium in your water sample. When we get adjusted SAR values approaching six, we start to have a situation where there's too much sodium in the irrigation water and we run the risk of causing dispersion of the clays in our soil and get sealing and poor water intake. So that's, a, that's our main point of concern there. Uh, next, we go down through all the minerals, calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, uh, sulfur, uh, and then any micronutrients we might have as well. Uh, so here, this is just a report so you, you know what's in the water. Um, again, sulfur in this aspect is going to be another key. Uh, maybe we can reduce some fertilizer applications if we know we're putting on so much uh, wa irrigation water a year. And that's also, now we kind of notice uh, when we're talking about nutrient application, we notice the second column here, this pounds per nine acre inches. So what we've done here is that this was... Uh, designed originally as, let's give the farmer an idea of what they're gonna be applying. Uh, in a no typical year, maybe we apply around nine inches of irrigation water. So this is what we're simply saying. If we've applied nine inches of water this year, this is the amount of nutrients in a pounds per acre that we've applied. So in the example report, uh, we can see that, uh, you know, silver part per million of X has equaled this many pounds of application in this year. And that really helps uh, you understand the fertilizer value that get, you get from your irrigation water. So uh, once again, it's a valuable tool. You know, I've covered kind of a brief overview of the fertility aspects, but there's many other ways to use this test, especially if we're in a different uh, environment other than uh, traditional row crops in the state. Uh, you can use this to see about uh, possible injury to the plant if we have high salts or, or different high elements like maybe borons exceptionally high based on the water uh, the water table that we're drawing from. 
uh, those can always be concerns. So, but the irrigation water quality test is designed to give the irrigator uh, a great idea of what they're applying when they pump that water. It's not just water in the crop, it's providing a lot more. And it's a great value to identify different sources of nutrients that you're already applying. So maybe we can take a fertilizer dollar and reapply it to some other crop input for that year.